I mean, I know she was in. I was literally just talking to her, a little confused. And, um, shock. Like, girl. I, I mean, I don't need to go into why it's, it's shocking. But I was, I was shocked. Hi friends, Taylor here. Um, just a quick update. I did a thing. A thing I promised I would never do. And that's why this video is delayed. See these, these cool headphones? Yeah, I got them for Christmas. I love them, they're wonderful. And yeah, yeah. Um, so when I was recording Harvestella, my mic was set to default and I didn't know that. And it decided to default to this. And as you can see, I don't, I don't have the mic plugged in because I don't need it. I, I have a mic, okay? Yeah, so, um, the whole video doesn't have any of me talking again. This is now the second Harvestilla video that there's no mic audio. So, um, <laughs> so it's taken longer because I have to do a voiceover, which I'm just not good at. Uh, kudos to the people that do voiceovers because I just am not good at them. But to be able to get that video out, I can't restart. You know how it is. Uh, so I gotta do a voiceover. That's why this video has taken so long to get out. Um, and I'm sorry, and I would like to say that I promise it'll never happen again, but I said that last time. And here we are with another video with no sound. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it. <laughs> So to start the day off, I decided to pull as much food as I could out of my storage box just to see how much I could make. As you guys know, the thing holding us back from progressing in the Heaven's Egg is me being afraid I don't have enough food to take on a boss fight. So I just decided to cook as much as I could to see where we were at. I then went outside to check the mail, you know, the usual. Of course we had mail. The first one said, I have to do something, and it was from Vent. We're super sorry for causing so much trouble. We apologized to our parents and the mayor, and they said it was okay. Malik is still mad, though. We can't let her leave like this, or we'll never see her again. But I think I can make it right. Catch you later, from Vent. And then the next one said, thank you for the fruit, from Sheeran. Thanks for picking the fruit for me. They actually his favorite, so I'd like to have some ready for whenever he decides to come back. You were such a, a huge help. I heard from a traveling merchant that two soldiers were seen over by the Njord Steep, and I remembered that he was part of a two-man team. If you meet them, would you tell them about me? There's a good chance they're not the same person, but still. From Sheeran. After reading the mail, I decided to do the daily chores of harvesting, planting, watering, filling up the machines, and getting on with my day. I decided to follow Cress's relationship quest, which required me to go to the New York Steep, so I headed there. We also know from Sheeran's letter that that could possibly be where her lover is, so I thought I would kill two birds with one stone. There were, in fact, two men there, which led to this cutscene. Crap, we'd almost made it to Leith. Forgive me, Berg, I may not be able to take you back to your hometown after all. At this point, I was kind of shocked because I really thought that I had killed her lover and this cutscene kind of was making it seem like maybe he isn't dead. Maybe this is him. So I said, are you okay? Huh, who are you? You're helping us? Thank you. And then I had to kill these monsters, super duper easy. We're alive? Thank you for saving us. If you hadn't shown up, we'd already be inside those monsters' belly by now. Glad I could help. A beast like that is usually no problem for us, you know. But this time, we're not exactly in top form. Oh no, is he? Nah, he's not dead. He's something close to that, though. Oh, we haven't even introduced ourselves. I'm Lai. And this is Berg. We're mercenaries. Which, you know, could be her lover. Taylor? So that's the name of my lifesaver. I'll make sure not to forget it. What's wrong? Oh, him? Don't worry about Berg. He's not injured or anything. He's just unconscious for another reason. A kind of complicated reason, though. 
More importantly, I need to ask you something. Which way is it to Leith from here? That way? Okay. Thanks. The rest of the journey should be straightforward from here. I can come with you, just in case. Oh, come on. Give me a break. I'm a mercenary. I'd never live it down if my pals saw me getting escorted around. I was a little appalled by him throwing up his hand like that, but, you know. Don't worry about us. We're big boys. Well, we're going now. Thanks again for saving us. So, at this point, it's looking like that could potentially be Sheeran's lover. But we don't know yet. Are they going to be all right? Best to check if they made it to Lath later. So, we would have to go back into Lath to see if they made it all right and if that is Sheeran's lover. I continued on because I was still looking for Cress's leaves and I wasn't sure exactly where they were. I was doing my best to avoid any fears, but still checking every nook and cranny I could, so I referenced the map a lot. I found this little cave, which inside this chest, I got my first recipe. It was for an arrow orb, and I also found what looks like a gravestone to me, but I couldn't interact with it, so maybe we'll find out about that a little bit later. I'm not sure. And I'm not gonna lie, you guys, it took me an embarrassingly long time to find these leaves, but I finally found them, collected them all, and then left in true fashion by running to the exit point because I don't want to deal with any more monsters. <laughs> I returned to Lath because I really wanted to know what happens with Sharon's storyline and if I did kill her lover or not. I found them pretty easily. They were right up front. So that took me into this cutscene. Hmm. Ignore me. I'm a giant cookie monster. I decided to use this moment. I don't know why but to grab cookies So <laughs> Who knows? Taylor, don't tell me you followed us here <laughs> Say I was on my way to Leith anyway. I see well, thanks anyway Though I have to admit it's pretty embarrassing that a kid like you is worried about a merc like me But I'm glad you're here actually we might have made it to Leith, but there's still something else I need help with I'd like to take Berg to an infirmary, but it's my first time here in Leith. The place has been throwing me for a loop. If you wouldn't mind, could you take us to a doctor? Sure, no problem. Thanks, appreciate it. I'm right behind you. If Berg were awake, he could have shown me around. He's from Leith, you see. Hmm. What? Why are you looking at me like that? A mercenary from Lath. Yeah, have you seen him around? Sorry, you haven't had a chance to chat to him yet. Once he wakes up, you'll be able to talk to your heart's content, but we need to get him seen first. You lead the way. So I just ran straight to the doctor. I gotta go see Cress anyway to give her her leaves, and they were right out front, nice and easy. That took us into the next cutscene. So this is the clinic. Thanks for bringing us here, Taylor. We're finally here, Berg. We're gonna get you patched up. Let's go. Hi, Taylor. What brings you here today? Did you injure yourself again? Not me. It's us who need your help. I'd like you to have a look at this guy. My buddy, Berg, please. All right, I'll give him a medical exam. So could you put him in the back room for me, please? At least neither of you sustained any severe injuries. Considering you got pounced on by monsters, you're basically unharmed. You must be impressive fighters. Nah. I can't take any credit. If Taylor hadn't shown up, we'd have been dead meat. More importantly, Doctor, how is Berg doing? I can see that fight was not the reason he's unconscious. Yeah, Berg was out of it long before that. We took on a request we thought we could handle, but it was ultimately too much for us. I see. So you'd run into a different beast before this one? Yeah. It took some damage too, you know. I'd say we were evenly matched. We lost something super important, though. Hmm. Not sure what they mean. 
Well, from what I can see, all the surface injuries are already healed. I suspect that he hasn't regained consciousness due to head damage. That's true, he did take a pretty hard hit to the head during that fight. I brought him here because I thought the smell of his hometown might bring him back. It's worth trying anything that might work at this point. I'll keep him here in my clinic for now. Okay, thanks, doctor. I hope he wakes up soon. Me too. But on second thought, having him take in the scent of his hometown might just work. You really think so? I do. And you know what else? I think hearing his loved one's voices might speed up his recovery too. Both options are rather unscientific though. Hmm. His loved ones. I remember him saying once he had a partner back in his hometown. Could it be the lady from the house? Taylor, don't tell me you know who it is. I think I do. You do? Great. Could you tell her that Berg is here? I'm willing to try all options if there's a chance of him waking up again. Thanks. After that, I went straight to Crest because we were already here and I had collected her cool leaves that she needed. So I went ahead and triggered that cutscene. Cress doesn't seem to be in. Drop off the material she requested? Yes. I mean, I know she was in. I was literally just talking to her. A little confused. And, um, shock. Pure shock at the fact that they decided that this is what Cress is gonna wear? I mean, hello. Hello. I could, could not believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Um... Yeah, shocked, to say the least. Like, girl, I, I mean, I don't need to go into why it's it's shocking, but I was I was shocked. Um, <laughs> it took me a second to regain composure. Oh, Taylor, you're here. Are those the ingredients I asked for? Oh, you're here. Yeah, I was just having a little nap. I uh, don't think she was having a nap in, in those clothes. Or is that, that what she sleeps in? Um, uh, not sure. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I was up all night, so I'm a little tired. Anyway, do you have those materials? What were you doing? Up all night, Cress. Dressed like that. I, I'm not really sure where they were leading to with this. You hand over the materials. Wow, you actually got them. Well, yeah, what do you mean? I mean, weren't they hard to get a hold of? I'm just surprised, that's all. You got hold of them so easily. I've always had to buy these from the merchants, but I'll be asking you from now on. This works out cheaper. Is it expensive to buy from them? Well, yeah, it rarely grows in areas where there are monsters. That's all I needed for today. Thanks, Taylor. I'll let you get on with your day. I've been up all night anyway, so I may as well put this to use now. While I'm on a roll. She, second time she mentioned that she'd been up all night. It's like she wants us to know. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna be nosy. What were you doing all night? Huh? Well, you know, there's always stuff to do. Isn't there? She being sketchy. I may not look it, but I'm pretty tough. Don't worry about me. Besides, I'm still young. I can handle the late nights. Okay, Chris. Okay. Wouldn't you say so? <laughs> that I'm young? Uh, forget about it. Anyway, there's no way around it. I can't research during practice hours, so nighttime is the only chance I get. What research is that? Sounds important. Huh? She, she's very shy about whatever she's researching. Did I say that? Wow, maybe I do need to get some sleep. I'm not making any sense. Never mind that, okay? Forget I said anything. Now, I need to get on with my work, so would you mind leaving me to it? I'll write to you if I need help again. See you later. So, yeah, she is being weird. I got more closeness with her, and then I also realized that that's just her outfit without the lab coat on. Like when she takes her lab coat off, 
that's what she's wearing underneath. It wasn't like a nightgown at first. I thought it was like a nightgown. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's just what she wears. She's just sassy. She likes to wear nothing, apparently. <laughs> and here I am just having a moment, uh, you know, taking it all in. Honestly, you know, like, I really like the look. I think uh, it's bold. It's, it's uh, feminine. She's really going for it, you know? It's like, she wears her lab coat. She's a businesswoman. She's hardworking mama. She takes it off. She's just mom. She's just mama. <laughs> so, um, ah! I had a little, like, uh, fangirl moment here. Just, you know, wishing I could live that life. Because under my lab coat at work, you know what, you know what it is? It's, uh, like, sweats and sweaters. So, <laughs> good for her. She's, you know, living that hot girl dream. I then proceeded to Sharon's house because at this point I am invested in this storyline and it brought me to this cutscene. Oh, hi, Taylor. Any news? Oh, I got news for you, Sharon. You tell Sharon about Berg. What? No way. Berg came back? He's at the doctor's? Okay, thanks. I'm coming, Berg. And the reason I'm so invested in this storyline is honestly because every theory that I have about it is wrong at this point. I've had so many theories, like I killed Berg, um, I have theories of him not waking up, just everything that I think is going to happen doesn't happen with this storyline, and so therefore I just can't do anything else. I just have to keep playing the storyline to figure out what's happening because I, I have speculated and I've been wrong every single time. Berg, I'm fine. I'm ready to go in. Taylor, you're back and you brought someone. Is she Berg's? Berg, where's Berg? Calm down. He's over here. Calm down. <laughs> I spoke to her about the state of Berg's health. In normal circumstances, it would have been nice to share a nice story of our travels with her instead. Let's hope Berg makes a speedy recovery. Yeah. Berg, why won't you open your eyes? Berg, why won't you say anything? I'm sorry, miss. This is all my fault. If only I hadn't told him to take on that request. Tell me, Cress, when is Berg going to wake up? I can't say for sure. But I can say I will do everything I can, so don't give up just yet. Okay. Cress, would it be bad for him if we moved him back to his house? That would be fine, but who would look after him there? I will. I'm the one who's been looking after his house all this time he's been gone. I see. Then I'll leave him in your hands. But I'm carrying him to the house. It's the least I can do. Taylor, you're helping too, right? Thank you, everyone. There. Thank you for helping me find Berg, Taylor. Lai just left town. He said he had to go out and work for the two of them while Berg is gone. I really appreciate all your help. It's thanks to you we managed to get Berg back home. I hope he wakes up soon. He will, I'm sure of it. He's good at getting up in the morning. <laughs> And that's the end of this part of the quest. We get some rewards, which of course is money and seeds. So many seeds, that's all they give you. Um, I'm here for you, Berg. I'll wait for you as long as it takes. And at this point, my running theory is that he's not going to wake up, which I'm pretty upset about if that is the case. Because uh, that would be such a sad story that that's just how it ends. I, you know, we have to continue on the story to see what happens, but at this point in time, that's my running theory and you can see that I'm highly concerned. So I decided to take a last look around town and I went into the inn. And when I went into the inn, I was a little bit surprised when I talked to the innkeeper, who is Van's mother. Oh Van, how could you do that to the mayor? I was a little shocked. Yeah, Van's mom is the innkeeper. So, fun fact. It's so frustrating not to be able to help your own children in a time like this. <laughs> so, yeah, Van's mom is the innkeeper. There, And I, I don't know. I thought you could do stuff at the inn. Maybe that's later on in the game. There's Van. He's hiding in the corner. 
Um, but right now you can't really do anything in the end. Malika is such a dummy. I'm an even bigger dummy. Like, I think at some point you can take food requests, but I apparently haven't unlocked it yet. So, yeah. Fun fact. Van's mom. Innkeeper. <laughs> Since it was starting to get late and I couldn't really do anything else, I decided to go home, plant some of the new seeds that I got, and just go to bed to start a new day. I did level up. We didn't make any money though, of course. I'm not doing too good on the money front, but we are on to the 16th day of spring. And so now is when I'm starting to keep an eye out on the date because I don't want to plant a lot of seeds and then they die during quietus. I think we're like halfway through spring. So I'm keeping an eye on that. I'm also continuing to make food as I can so that way we can prepare for the boss fight because I know there's gonna be one soon. Sometime soon there will be a boss fight. I spent the morning cooking as much food as I could make with the ingredients that I had because I knew today I wanted to go to the dungeon and I wasn't sure if today would be a boss fight or not. I then also decided to do some crafting because if we needed ladders or bombs, I wanted to have some. And I remembered that we also got that arrow orb recipe and I wanted to check that out and see what it was. The description didn't tell me what it was, so I decided to just make one just to see. You never know. I had the ingredients, so couldn't hurt. Um, and we got the description that said, an orb that has the power of wind sealed within it. It attacks by releasing the energy it holds inside. So it's something we can use in battle. I have not actually tried it yet. I don't know how to use it, but it's some sort of battle item. I went outside and of course started the day by checking the mail. One from Crest saying, I have another request. Thank you for bringing those ingredients. It makes things so much easier when someone is around helping me. As I expected, I'm going to need to keep asking you to bring me items in lieu of money for your medical bills. Speaking of which, there's a new ingredient I need. Please bring one ring of re-iced flowers from the Jade Forest. Man, we gotta do something. Hey Taylor, you can cook, right? If you can, then you've gotta help my dad. He hasn't been able to come up with a new recipe for the inn in weeks. It's really getting to him. I want to help, but I don't know how to cook. So please, Taylor, you got to help him. If you bring something tasty, then it might just spark my dad's imagination again. I'm begging you from Van. So now we unlocked food delivery. You can earn money in food recipes by delivering certain dishes. Uh, that's what I was talking about at the end. I knew that was a thing, but I just didn't realize that I hadn't unlocked it yet. So I went about my morning harvesting my crops, taking care of them, watering them, planting new seeds, you know, the usual morning routine. I was going to take off, but then I saw Van at my door, so I decided to talk to him to see what he wanted. Ah, Taylor, th th this is really bad. W w what do you mean? Hey, don't make fun of me. Now's not the time. Something really bad happened. I didn't know that was making fun of him. That was an accident. I <laughs> did not mean to make fun of the stutter. Vent disappeared. No one knows where he went, not even his mom and dad. Malika is moving away soon. He probably ran away because he's so sad he doesn't want to see her go. Taylor, you've got to help. The Ben disappeared. No one can find him. His mom and dad are really upset. I've been looking too, but I seriously can't find him anywhere. Oh, Van, what are you doing here? No, what are you doing here? I thought you were leaving today. Yeah, but Ben has gone missing. That's more important right now. It's fine. You can go. We don't need you to find him. What? That's so rude. I'm worried about him. You're moving away. What do you care? That's not important right now. We need to focus on finding Ben. Yeah, what Taylor said. Stop arguing with me. I need to find Ben. You stop arguing with me. I don't have time to waste on you. <laughs> Gasp, how could you? You heard me. Guys, this really isn't the time. Hmm. <laughs> I know. Fine. Truce. Only for now, though. Finding Vent is our top priority. Times like this call for, um, what was it again? Come on, pull yourself together, Van. An investigation. Yeah, that. Let's talk to Vent's parents. That's what I was gonna say. The first step of an investigation is to collect clues. Good idea. Let's start our investigation with Vent's mom and dad. They should be in the village square. Let's try there. 
So I started the next part of this quest, friends forever. <laughs> but that's gonna have to pause because I want to go to the Seas Light and finish that quest. So that's what I did. I went ahead and traveled to the Seas Light. I took the shortcut that I had made the last time I was here. Eventually I took the shortcut that I had made. And I checked the map a lot because this dungeon was getting pretty confusing on where I needed to go. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't wasting any time. And thankfully I had a couple of shortcuts. So I just took those to get back to where I needed to be. There were a couple of big boys in the way, but they were relatively easy to take down. I just, you know, kept my distance like a true mage and let my other teammates do all the hard work and take all the damage while I reap all the glory from afar. <laughs> That's my fighting style. Just stay back and do minimal work. <laughs> I made it to the Modus Monolite relatively quickly which is always satisfying because I know that I can come back here easily. And I went up the stairs, which took me into the next cutscene. What is that? It's a big monster. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we can't proceed until we take out that monster. It looks a lot bigger and stronger than the other monsters. It might be a mutant variety. What should we do, Taylor? We fight it because I prepared. I was smart. Not the type to sit and wait, huh? Then let's go to it. And luckily I prepared. We went ahead and fought this big boy who wasn't too hard. Um, he did have a bunch of annoying attacks and it took me a little bit to figure out his move style, but in terms of boss, he was relatively easy. I did have to use some of my food to be able to take him down, but mm, nothing too bad. And honestly, my teammates did a lot of damage for me, so I didn't have to do anything. But his attack style is different than the first boss from the first dungeon that we went into where the, he had AoE attacks, this was more just like a regular enemy, which makes me think that he's not the big boss of this area. There will be a bigger final boss. This guy had no AoE attacks. It was all just like a normal enemy style fight. So there's definitely gonna be a different boss. So thankfully I didn't use all of my food to take him down. Um, and he went down relatively easy. Of course, that took us in to the rest of the cutscene. That one was tough. I'm not sure how he pulled that off. Stop right there. I can't explain it, but something's off. Well, yeah, something's off. He's, he's still moving. He's <laughs> still alive. You can see I'm concerned. It's regenerating? No, the tissue is multiplying and repairing itself. Uh, we should get out of here. <laughs> it's like doing a dance. <laughs> we should, we should leave. You're right, attacking this thing without a plan will only end in our demise. I agree. I think it's best we leave and come up with a plan B. Let's go back to my place. Yep, just run away. Dancing? No. Dancing monsters? Nah, we, we gotta go back. So I just took the Modus Monolite back to the front of the dungeon and went to his place. Which of course brought me to the next part of the story. I can't believe that creature was able to regenerate like that. The hell was that thing? What indeed? What's on your mind, Arya? I wonder if it's okay to say. It's not like I have anything conclusive. Yeah, share, Arya. We don't have anything else to go on. If you know something that might help, then please tell me. I thought we were friends. Yes, you're right. Yeah, Arya. But everything I mentioned from here stays between us, okay, Aesil? That monster's restorative ability, it resembled something like technology we had in my time. In your time? What are you trying to say? I forgot. He doesn't know. Arya is like, uh... You explained to Aesil how you met Arya. 
So you're a time traveler? I didn't think such a thing existed. I forgot. He didn't know. <laughs> the inside of the Heaven's Egg looks very much like a research facility for my era. I'm sure I've seen it on the news once. The Darwin Institute of something or other. I think their end goal was to create a biosphere of nanomachines to speed up self-regeneration. Nanobio- what? Oh, I'm sorry. That must be a lot to take on. In any case, I think that to defeat a monster like that, we need to do so with one crushing blow. Maybe we could build something. Something that can take it out in one blow. If only I had my equipment with me, then I might be able to throw something together. Maybe the Shadow Assassin can help. Tiel is listening in on our conversation. <laughs> sure, join us. Tiela, did we wake you? No, I was already awake. Yeah, she was spying. Who's the Shadow Assassin? Oh, I remember you talking about that before. I remember the day I was helping to tidy the library at the orphanage. I found a really interesting book and got so caught up in reading it that I totally forgot about cleaning. It was like some sort of record about Nemea's history. And since I'd only been in town for a little while, I found it really interesting. It had a section about a shadow assassin who took refuge in Nemea. But assassins are supposed to be awful people. Why would the town protect someone like that? The book said the assassin wanted to leave that life behind them. I see. They must have been looking for a fresh start. The interesting part is that they specialize in taking out the targets in one shot by striking their weak spot. Now I understand. You're suggesting we find the shadow assassin and ask them to help us. Yeah, Arya. Duh. <laughs> Convenient enough. That's right. Hmm. I'm not sure if an assassin's the right call, but we don't really have any other option. Asol, why don't you try going to check the orphanage library too? You might be able to find more information on the shadow assassin. She's got a point. I don't want to hang out with kids. I Nope, she's got a point. It's definitely better than doing nothing. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to stay here. I'm not feeling well at all today. My ears are ringing like a voice in my head calling to me. Of course, boo, Tiela's is always sick. Don't worry, Tiela. Stay here and get some rest. For now, we'll make our way to the orphanage. I don't know how anyone could pursue Asol because right now, the way he babies Tiela is just not my thing. Don't mind me just nomming on my s'mores cookies. But yeah, the way he babies Tiela, like, I could not. I could never. Not my thing. I want a man obsessed with me and me only. Thank you. <laughs> so I was going to go to the library since I'm already here. But I ran into this other side quest from the town. I decided to just talk to this guy to see what was going on. He's sneezing. Aha, choo! You know, COVID. <laughs> He's out and about sick, clearly, but whatever. Ugh, I can't stop sneezing. Like, go inside, bro. You're sick, go home. Just go home. At this rate, I'll... Achoo! Ha choo! Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. The sneezing is getting out of hand. Hey, you, young man, what are you doing out here? You better go home, quick. Huh? Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Hurry and stay home till your sneezing calms down. Yeah, it's courtesy. Oh, okay, well then, see ya. <laughs> That's all it took. He's going home. <laughs> uh, isn't it just a cold? If only it were just a cold. Recently, people keep getting abducted around here. Weirdly enough, it's only people who sneeze that get taken away. Doesn't matter if they're men, women, kids, or seniors. Anyone can get taken. This town's got a lot of kidnapping going on. First, it's the women. Now, people who sneeze get taken? I don't... I don't know. They do all come back after a while. But somehow, they don't remember a thing about being abducted. Gives you the creeps, don't it? Uh, why only people who sneeze? All we know is it's only people who sneeze that get taken away. You should be careful too, buddy. If you start sneezing, you better hide away in the inn or leave town. It, it, I have so many questions. <laughs> I hope that guy made it back home all right. If you wouldn't mind, could you check if he made it home? Just in case. I have to get back to work. You see, we're really busy at the moment. 
Um, okay. You will? Oh, good. I'm not one to talk, leaving it with you, but you're a good egg. Either way, it's up to you now. <laughs> Thanks, sir. The sneezing guy went that way across a bridge. Then he turned left. The Hidden Doctor's Expedition. So, um, uh, yeah, I feel like there is a doctor abducting people and, and I don't know, experimenting on the sneezing kids. I don't know. So, <laughs> I just, I said that is something for a, another time and went to the orphanage to continue on the main quest. <laughs> Ran into this, this goddess of a woman. This beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, this whole episode is just full of beautiful women. I mean, look at her portrait. Look at her portrait. She's so cute. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Asa, welcome. We weren't expecting you here today. I, this game has blessed us with pretty women that I can only aspire to be. And she's very curvaceous. I mean, she's got hips for days. Hips for days. Um, and her dress is cut a little short, but, uh... It, yeah, I mean, to be working with kids, her hips exposed. I don't know. I don't know. And it also swings open. You can just see. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a graphical glitch. But her dress just shows everything. Stina, perfect timing. Is it really? Would you mind letting us take a look at your library? And the way she's standing, it's just her dress is open. I never took you to be a bookworm, but brought this on. Like, you can see right up her dress. I, I don't know. The, it's all I could think about this whole time is that she's literally standing legs spread and her dress is cut. I don't know. It, I don't know. I wonder if it has something to do with your friend there. That's right. I forgot to introduce you. This is Arya and Taylor. And this is Estina. She looks after the children here. It's a pleasure. So, what is it you're looking for? It shouldn't take me long to find, since Tiela organized everything. We're looking for a record of Nemea that includes information on the Shadow Assassin. I wonder who that could be. The Shadow Assassin? Apparently, they were able to kill their targets with a single blow. Have you heard anything about it? Hmm. I wonder. I don't. Who could it be? And why would you be looking for something like that? You explain the situation to Estina. Her, I hope those are pants and not like stockings because she, her dress is just open. <laughs> now it makes sense. I'd never have expected a monster like that to be inside the heaven's egg. Although I don't think you'll have much luck asking the assassin for help. What makes you say that? While I don't know the particulars of why they came to Nomi of all places, they did come to leave that life behind them, didn't they? They probably don't want to kill anything anymore. Living after the taking the life of another is not an easy thing to do. Ah, uh, I see. But we're not asking them to kill a human. They wouldn't need to deal with that kind of guilt again. It isn't that simple. Your heart is forever tainted once you have someone else's blood on your hands. Even if you wash the blood away, the crime itself remains. It's not something you easily forget. Hmm. You seem pretty knowledgeable about this sort of thing. Almost as if you have first-hand experience. <laughs> Arya smart. She knows. She gets it. She's aware. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Hmm. And Aesil's just dumb. Aesil does it. <laughs> it's okay. Don't don't hurt your pretty little head. Uh, maybe we should start over. Are we really back at square one? There's no need for that. The seeds have been sown. See, Arya knows what's up. She knows. She she is aware of the situation. She she knows what's going on. She said we sown the seeds. We planted it in her head. I'm surprised we were able to find the Shadow Assassin so easily. We got pretty lucky. 
I just hope my bluff worked. I thought they might drop their guard if I pushed a little harder. I'm sorry. You've completely lost me. Oh, Aesol. <laughs> it's okay. That Astina, whichever way you look at it, she's clearly the Shadow Assassin. Could anyone but the Assassin have been able to speak on their behalf so eloquently? You think it's Astina? Not think. I know it's Astina. Now we just need to convince her to help us. It's not going to be easy, though. What do you think we should do? Oh, shoot. I just remembered. I need to go give Tiella her medicine. She's probably sleeping, so do you mind if we head back to my place for a moment? Sure. I don't see why not. There's no use in trying to think of a plan out here anyway. Sure. We'll go back and help Tiella. She's always in need. Ugh. So, I went back to go help Tiella and give her her medicine because heaven forbid she'd be left alone for two seconds. She can't handle it. Ugh. So sick of her already. <laughs> I feel bad. She's nice, but whatever. Tiella, I'm home. Tiella, hello. Tiella? She's not here. She doesn't seem to be here. Do you think she went for a walk or something? I have a feeling she didn't. But she said she wasn't feeling well. Then let's go find her. Good idea. Well, have to go find her. She's always a damsel in distress. Thanks, I appreciate it. She literally can't, she just can't be left alone. She's always getting herself in trouble. Um, we're always saving her. I just, I'm not a big fan of Tiela. Her favorite places to go would be the observation deck or the orphanage. Oh, look. No, monsters at this time. Hey. They look like they're flying towards the the orphanage. We have to go now. The children are in danger. And so I went up to the orphanage to save Tiella from danger. But uh, it's Estina. Estina's out there with the kids. It is not Tiella. It is our Lord and Savior, Estina. <laughs> Estina! Aesol! Tisk. You will leave this place alone. And one slash. Look at her go. Beautiful woman. Beautiful fighting. <laughs> she killed them in one blow. Duh, Aesol. We've been talking about this. She's the assassin. So this is the power of the shadow assassin. Fine. Let's say I am the shadow assassin. What difference does that make? I told you before, I won't use those skills anymore if I can help it. They just did. All they do is bring back painful memories of that day. What day, Estina? Please, just go home. I won't help you. I wish to stay here and watch over the children. That is the life I have chosen. Hey, Aesol. What's wrong? Aw, oh, man, I'm so glad I found you. Why the panic? The monsters have already been dealt with. Let me speak, would ya? It's that girl you've been looking after. Tiella, was it? The monsters took off with her in tow. Of course they did. That can't be. What did you say? I don't know what they've got planned, but they took her back to the Heaven's Egg. Whatever you're thinking of doing, you best do it quick. Thank you. And he's off. Feed. <laughs> ah, wait. How far do you expect to get charging in there on your own? Yeah, Aesol, come on. Use a brain. <sighs> Let's go after him. Come on, Estina. You can do it. We need you. I want you on my party. <laughs> You're meant to be in my party, please. Miss Estina, did Tiela get kidnapped by the monsters too? She did, but it's okay. Aesol's going to bring her back. But he'll be going into their nest, right? Won't there be lots and lots of them in there too? Oh gee, I hope he'll be okay. Miss Estina, could you go save Tiella too? Oh yeah, we saw you beat up those monsters just now. You'd be lots of help. Yes, you would. But I need to stay here and look after all of you. Nah, you don't have to worry about us. We won't do anything dangerous until you get back. Pinky promise. <laughs> I bet Tiella's super scared in there on her own. Please. You've got to help her, Miss Estina. Oh, you're really making this difficult. 
Yeah, Mrs. Stina. Come help us, please. Please, sh pretty shadow assassin lady. <laughs> I just want her on my team. I wanted my team full of beautiful women. That's all I want. <laughs> I then saw this quest mark on my map and thought it was part of this quest. It actually wasn't, so I wasn't really interested in it at the moment. Annie, what have you done? But I... I went through it anyway because I accidentally clicked on it. This isn't like you. I can't believe you broke that base. You know better than that. Treat things with care. Sorry, I won't do it again. Don't say it like that. Do you even mean it? Yeah. Can I go now? Ooh. Sassy. Fine. But you won't get away with it this second time, Annie. If I catch you doing something like this again... And she walked away. <laughs> hey, I'm not done with you. She's sassy. My goodness, what's gotten into that child? It's not really any of my business, but I'm here, I guess. Oh, what a moment to walk in on. Is that unusual for her? Thanks for your concern. Annie is not usually the kind of child to act up like this. She's always been very well behaved. She's the last one here I would expect to do something like this. In fact, she's usually the one to keep the other kids in check. But she's been acting up more and more recently. Um, maybe she's being influenced by someone. Maybe there could be someone outside the orphanage with bad intentions influencing her to act this way. I dread to think, though. This couldn't have happened at a worse time. She knows she can come to us about anything. If only she talked to us. Shall I try talking to her? Really? I would be ever so grateful if you could. Sure. Think Annie might just open up to you. I have a good feeling about it. The truth behind the mischief. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to take this quest, and I was not going to continue it. So <laughs> I went to the Heaven's Egg because we got to save our girl, Tiella, who's not really my girl. She just is dead weight, honestly, at this point. But I just want to see Estina in action. That's really why I'm here. Estina all the way. 10 out of 10, great character design. <laughs> Aisle, hold up a second. Don't try to stop me, Arya. There isn't a moment to lose. I have to get Tiela out of there. But that regenerating monster is still in there, remember? Yeah, Aisle. All the more reason why we can't just sit around doing nothing. <sighs> and if you lose, what then? It won't come to that. Okay, why don't you settle down? We just need to kill the one regenerating monster, right? Question mark, question mark. Who is it? Easy, show me the way, please. It's Estina. Estina! So you're finally admitting you're the shadow assassin? Hmm, am I though? I could just be keeping you on your toes and be no use to you whatsoever. The shadow assassin is just old gossip anyway, right? Good grief. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not here for your thanks. I'm here because I want to be. Okay. But I know keeping my mouth shut won't please any of you, so I'll tell you this. I mean it when I say I don't want to use my ability. Even now I can feel my hands shaking. But if these shaking hands are able to save one life, Estina, I won't pretend to know your circumstances, but I am grateful for your help. And I'm sorry for being so pushy and awful earlier. Don't worry, I understand you needed to get a reaction out of me. Don't think anything of it. Thank you for understanding. Well, with that out of the way, I think it's about time for round two. Let's do this. Estina joined your party! Super excited. <laughs> yes, love her. Party formation, you can organize your party under party in the menu whenever you're near a modus monolite. Taylor's meeting with Estina awakens heightened powers. You acquired the Shadow Walker job. A job with great physical power, it deals a lot of damage to enemies weak to break and other status abnormalities. So, I decided to look at my party, and I could only add one more to my party, which was kind of sad. So if I added Arya and Aisle, I wouldn't be able to have Estina. If I added Estina, then I can't have Aisle. 
So I sat here debating about what I wanted to do and I decided just for the moment I wanted a soul on my team. Um, I love Arya, but I just want to try this out and see how it is. Uh, we did have to go back to this monster though. There it is, the monster in question. I can't see its weak spot yet. You'll need to weaken it first. Got it. Easily done. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now we're a team. So I did have to fight it again. It was definitely easier this time around because I already knew how it was going to attack uh, and all of its moves. So it took no time at all. It was then time for it to do its little uh, dancey dance for us. So here we go. Time to, you know, shake that monster booty. There he goes. It's regenerating. Estina! I see it. Dead. It's dead. You, you did it! That was amazing, Estina. I'm impressed. I'm just glad I haven't lost my touch. You really earned that title. There's no need for praise. It won't make me feel any better. I was forced to learn how to kill people since I was able to walk. Using this ability now just made me realize that the only thing I know how to do right is destroy life. Estina, that's not true. You raised me back at the orphanage and you're wonder with the kids. I don't know how old she is. This right here got me confused. She raised Asol. Your past does not define your identity. You can do so much more than kill. And I'll kick anyone's ass who tries to tell you otherwise. Okay, Asol, sure. <laughs> oh, Asol. <laughs> it's just like you said, Estina. The Shadow Assassin is nothing more than baseless gossip. You are you, not some fable in a book. You're a teacher at an orphanage who just happens to have a killer arm. Heh, <laughs> you grew up to be a fine young man. Now, this isn't the place to stand around chatting. We need to start looking for Tiela. You're right. Mm -hmm. At least that's out of the way, huh? Something on your mind? Arya, bestie, come on, spill. I guess I'm just glad we have a guy like Aesil around. I don't think I could have handled that as smoothly. Come on, we should follow them then. Oh, she, she, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, you probably would have been a little too blunt, but that's okay. <laughs> so I continued on in the dungeon and we ran into this, which, uh, ride the wind. It makes you float. Uh, new dungeon mechanic. I realized relatively quickly though what it's meant for. It's so you can jump over these gaps. It's just a new mechanic they threw in to make this dungeon a little different. It's obviously has to do with the wind. And look, you can just ride across these little gaps to continue on in the dungeon. It's trying to add like sort of a puzzle. Like, as you can see here, you have to use that one to travel to this platform and then this one to travel to the next one. Um, and if you fall, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It's, it's a puzzle mechanic, but it's a relatively basic puzzle mechanic. They have these areas where you just basically had to sneak past the fears and they would move around, so you had to time it correctly. That was relatively simple, but just another new mechanic in this dungeon. Instead of like walking straight past them, they're not moving. These ones are moving. But I was starting to get a little nervous because it was getting late and I really just wanted to get to a safe spot in this dungeon so that I wouldn't have to do it all over again. The next day, you know, like build a bridge or a ladder, just something that could get me back to where I was left off. I found this little area where I could destroy the wall. So I did, I wasted time doing it, hoping that it would lead to something. It was just a chest, not really what I wanted, but I did end up finding a ladder um, and rebuilding the ladder so I could get back to this point in the dungeon without wasting the day. I used the return bell to get home just in time so that I did not pass out. Call that a win. I went to bed and I ended the day there. 
Um, we again leveled up. We are now level 15. So the big one, five, pretty good. Uh, and that's where I ended the episode. I felt like that was a good stopping point. We reached a good point in the dungeon and we got a lot it, pretty far in the story actually. If you guys have made it this far, I thank you so much for watching. These are not my favorite kind of videos to do. I honestly, it's so stressful. I don't like voiceovers. I don't think they're very entertaining, at least the ones that I do. So thank you guys for watching and I will make sure again that there will be no mic issues starting now. <laughs> thank you guys so much and I'll see you next week. Thank you.